Hello and welcome back. Today I have a very rapid 10 minute demonstration that creates a very loose and impressionistic painting inspired by autumn trees. The technique I've chosen today is one I've wanted to try for a while and involves using a sponge to apply paint and create texture within the painting. This technique can quite easily lead to the creation of lots of marks resulting in a very confused and overloaded composition. To try and avoid this I'm going to use a very simple L-shaped design with a tall tree on the left, a loose line of undergrowth and then a small tree on the right to balance the composition. I don't have a precise sketch or photographic reference to work from for this painting. Instead I'm going to improvise and paint in a very loose freestyle way reacting to the chance occurrences that present themselves during the painting process. The sponges I'm going to be working with are all natural, I think these are Greek in origin, and they're all about 8cm wide. I'm also going to use a small hake, a rigger and a medium goat hair brush to apply the paint. My paper today is Bockingford 140 pound knot, which is roughly 18 by 28 centimetres in size. And my palette today is very similar to last week's. I have raw sienna, burnt sienna, gamboge hue, alizarin crimson, and my blue today is ultramarine. As you can see, my paper today is in portrait format, and I've done no drawing at all before starting the painting. Starting then with my hake brush, and I'm just going to establish a very loose and a very pale background for the painting. And I'm going to create this with three colours, ultramarine, a little bit of alizarin crimson and some raw sienna as well. Just going to splash this onto the paper. I want this background to be quite wet as I want the first few marks I make with a sponge to soften a little into the background. And I'm keeping things very pale here. I don't want to get too heavy with the tone or too saturated with the colour. There's going to be quite a lot of marks, quite a lot of action going on top of this background, so I just want to keep this first wash quite simple. Picking up a sponge, and I've got a second palette on the left hand side with some neat paint, and I'm mixing together some raw sienna, some gamboge, just stamping that into the surface, and adding a little bit of burnt sienna into there as well. Touch your water onto the sponge just to soften the marks a little bit. As I say, these marks are going to a very wet background, so they will soften a little. And I'm trying to move the sponge a little as I apply these strokes to the surface of the paper just to soften the marks a little bit. Dabbing it on and letting it move and spread. Back with my hake, just softening off some of those marks a little bit. Getting a second piece of sponge. Just going to add some further paint to my left hand palette. A little bit of ultramarine. and a touch of burnt sienna as well. I'm getting a second sponge, I'm just going to mix those two colours together to make it a rough colour grey and I'm just going to add some further marks into the surface of the paper. Very loose, moving the sponge as I apply these, creating some nice smudgy marks. Again adding further water with my hake Picking up my first sponge, getting some further marks of uh, bright orange and yellow into the painting. Further bits of burnt sienna. Slightly darker tone to these. Again, very loose and very quick. Just creating that tall tree on the left hand side. And a few marks on the right for the uh, tree on the right hand side. Picking up now a rigger, uh, I'm going to create one or two lines while the background is still wet. Uh, I want to qu create quite a dark tone for these, so I'm going to use ultramarine again, a little bit of burnt sienna, mixed together to make quite a dark colour grey. Adding a touch of uh, alizarin crimson into there as well. Dragging up a few lines, branches sticking out uh, through the foliage of these autumn trees. The rigger I'm using here is a number three. Being very energetic and loose with these rigger marks. And as I say, the background is still a little bit wet, so these marks will blend and spread into the background a little bit. 
picking up now a calligraphy brush and I'm going to use that dark mix and uh, adding a little bit more uh, ultramarine into it, a tiny bit more lizard and crimson into it. I'm just going to splash some dark marks into the bottom of that tree shape. Just want to create a little bit of uh, a tonal variety to the painting. And I'm creating quite a dark purple for this and this should complement the yellow tones in the tree. Again I'm working wet into wet with these marks so they're going to blend and spread quite a lot as the painting evolves. And as with all wet into wet marks they're going to dry slightly paler than they appear at first so don't be too shocked with the strength of tone that I've introduced here. Further bits of sponge mark. The paper is already beginning to dry so some of these marks are getting slightly crisper. And again using my rigger to add some further fine lines to the tree on the left. Little bits of branches poking through the holes of the foliage. Tilting my board a little bit just to blend that paint a little bit. I'm just going to remove a little bit of pigment using a calligraphy brush. Just dragging away some of the excess pigment there. Back with my sponge and this is a mix of burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. And I'm just going to create some uh, quite bright orange marks along that line of foliage in the foreground. Again very loose with these marks, very quick. Back with my rigger and that dark mix we created earlier. Adding a few lines to the trees on the right hand side. Again little bits of branches poking through the foliage. Again I'm using the springy qualities of the rigger here to create some uh, lovely energetic marks for these lines. Picking up a sponge again and I'm just going to remove a little bit of pigment from the bottom right hand corner there just dragging the pigment up a little bit. Just to create a feel of grasses and things overgrowing the tree on the left hand side. A few purple marks onto a sponge. Mixture of the ultramarine and the elephant crimson. Mixed into that dark mix. A few soft strokes into the foreground. And a few small marks to indicate a small tree in the centre there. A little bit more gamboge, some stronger colours into the top. Slightly sharper crisper marks as the papers are beginning to dry and a few more of those marks onto the tree on the right hand side. Trying to use the drying cycle of the paper here with some very soft diffuse marks in the background and then slowly building up one or two crisper marks as the paper dries. Finding my rigger and using a little bit of that dark mix that we created earlier just to create some further fine lines into the tree. Try not to overdo this. And a few further lines on the right hand side.
just going to use my palette knife to scratch in a light mark against that dark shape on the left hand side. A little bit of light against dark. And dragging up one, one or two further lines into the tree. Back again with my rigger and I'm just going to try and complete the painting with that one or two further lines into the tree on the right hand side. Again using the springy qualities of the rigger to do this. And to finish the painting off just one or two fine lines into the foreground on the right hand side. Just a little bit of dry brush mark. And I think I'm going to stop there. This technique is great fun to do and can produce some very loose and unpredictable outcomes. Because of the intensity of the textures the sponge can produce, try to work into a wet background in places if possible and to move the sponge a little when you apply it to the paper. This will produce some soft passages within your paintings and prevent the image from becoming overloaded with marks. To help to maintain harmony within the painting, I've chosen a very limited palette for the watercolour, which mainly includes variations of yellow and orange with a little purple to complement the yellow. As always, please feel free to adapt my composition a little and produce paintings that express landscapes close to you. However, try to keep your design simple as this technique can quite quickly lead to images with lots of marks and shapes that lack clarity and form. I hope you enjoy trying this, it's certainly a technique I'm going to be using again, and please post your results to the Facebook group. Until next week, happy painting!